Hey everybody, welcome back. AMS Bow Fishing's Bow Fishing Buzz Season 4, Episode 2. Episode 2. Wow. My name is Matthew, and I'm here with my good buddy D. Schmitty. At a boy shirt, uh, D. Schmitty. Also sponsored by Mega Mouth Bow Fishing as well. Heck Sponsoring yeah. the podcast. Very cool there. Heck Very yeah. cool. You bet. You bet. We have got a great show today, Schmitty. Lots of action packed, lots of good content here for sure. We do. We got uh, two, uh, you know, one possibly two guests that are going to be joining us. Um, and a lot of you probably know who they are. Uh, maybe some of you have been out with them already. Uh, we've got Captain Travis Lampar. And his brother, Shannon Lampar, might be joining us. He had a little bit of issue last night, um, and we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, but they are the owners of Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing down in Polk City, Florida, Schmitty. That's pretty cool. I've heard a lot of good things about Twisted Limbs, so Absolutely. it'll be interesting to see what they all have to say on the podcast today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting those guys out here with us. And uh, so we've got them. Yeah, but first we're going to do a little talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we've been here doing uh, the last couple of weeks. And, uh, hey, we actually stuck to our two-week podcast You're darn right we did. Podcast yes, schedule. we did. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're going to try to stick to that as best we can this entire season. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Schmitty, uh, last week uh, we went to down to Louisville yep. for the uh, ATA show or the Archery Trade Association show. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about it? You know, with with everything that's kind of been going on, with all the crap that's going on, and all that stuff. What did you think about? Because last year we didn't have it. Right. They canceled right. it last year. It was a. Was there a virtual aspect to it last year, or was there just no show? Period. You could still purchase. You know, dealers could still purchase gear at certain discounted prices. Sure. Um, but it wasn't like the virtual show that we did for like the NBS show mm-hmm. and the Sports Inc. show. Right. It was just they could see the prices, they could see the specials, they would call us and get the orders that way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for everyone who doesn't know what the ATA is, every year it's a big show. It's Archery Trade Association. Um, and this year, 2022, it was down in Louisville, Kentucky. It's not open to the public like other other shows are. It's like a dealer. It's a dealer show. Correct. Uh, manufacturers go down there and set up with all their products in a big booth space. Lots of new product is shown at the show. So every year, except last year, of course, mm-hmm. AMS, we go down there, we set up a booth with all of our product, and then it's really cool. We get to talk to our dealers that come down there. I mean, and it's a big, it's a big, big, huge event. It is. Um, and this mm-hmm. year it was, I would say, Matt, correct me if you, you know, hear me say anything that you don't agree with about the show, but there was less people there in general. A lot of times these shows, like in years past, I know the first year I went down there, you get a lot of uh, country music stars TV personalities, mm-hmm. um, these booths, you know, will hire these people to try to bring in more foot traffic and whatnot. So, yep. so you get lots of people bringing other people to the show. So, say you got a dealer, um, the owners of that dealership or that 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 outdoor retail store will have two people go that actually do the buying and the business aspect of things. And then in past years, they'd bring four or five other people because there'd be all kinds of cool stuff down there and people they want to meet. Right. Um, and this year. I think with all the COVID, all the COVID stuff going on, there was not nearly as many celebrity type no. people down there. No. So foot traffic in general was down, but the people that were down there, as far as our point of view, were people that were there to order right. and talk about bow fishing. Um, so it was really mm-hmm. cool. I really think it, the best part of these shows is going down there and putting a face to the name. Right. You know, you see all these orders yep. come in. You talk to guys on the phone, and then being able to see them in person, I think that just really builds that rapport with that dealer. They they see who they're talking to, especially with us. Yep. Like if they call us, they're talking to us. We're building their product type of deal. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's kind of what the ATA show is in general. All of our dealers that are down there, they come look at the booth, and they go to all their little, all their vendors and manufacturers that they get from. So it's really a, it's a cool show. It was it was a good show. Less people in general, but pretty good show as far as the business side right, of things go. Right. Because there was three of us in the booth, me, you, and Kevin. Yep. And, yep. you know, there'd be times when two of us would be talking to some dealers, and uh, the other guy was just kind of hovering around waiting for the next one to come in. And then you might have a little slack time, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then somebody else would come in the, in the booth. Yep. Which was very nice um, because... In the past, like you say, you got the media's running around. You got you know people following TV celebrities and stuff like that around there, and it, the ATA show is about meeting your dealers and and making deals with with your dealers and getting product to them on time. Yep. 
and stuff. So I remember, you know, in the past, it was it was crazy as far as writing orders at the ATA show. Sure, yeah. Um, not a lot of them will call in and stuff and, and whatnot. But um, and I tell you, once again, Schmitty, we had to drive through snow oh, and a little bit of mist and rain on the way down there. Um, it happens every year. Well, and then our, our whole, the day we left, we left Wednesday, I don't know, the 4th or the 5th or whatever the date was. We had to go get a rental vehicle because we weren't going to take a trailer down there. Then we got the <laughs> rental car, and the rental car was too small, so we had to end up taking the shop truck. And then yep. the weather was terrible. We're driving. There's semis in the ditch, people in the ditch. <laughs> Man, that happens was... every year. I had about, um, if I weighed 10 pounds more, I would not have fit in the back seat. <laughs> You, I couldn't see you. Oh, like you I would, could not see you. Yourself and Kevin were having conversations, and I would like I would chime in and say something. You guys couldn't even hear me. I'm like, okay, I'll just be in my little world back here. Um, yeah, but, but overall, yeah. I, I think the ATA show was better than what I was expecting it yeah. to be. Yeah, it, I, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I wasn't sure what what to expect down there, but it was yep. it was pretty cool. One thing, Matt, that I thought was interesting, and this just goes to show what the the state of getting product has been the last two years. A lot of our dealers came up to the booth, oh, hey, guys, how's it going? And they'd ask us, well, how long are we looking for delayed shipment? Correct. And I, at least from, from our point of view, every time that would get asked, I was like, well, what, what are you talking about? We don't have any problems shipping stuff out. Uh, if you want me to, I could send uh, the office a text right now. We'll get that shipped out like before the day ends if you want me to. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you guys, aren't, <laughs> you guys don't have any delays? Heck no. No. no Made no. in the U.S., baby. We got stuff. We got all kinds of stock. We've been building stock up for the, for this upcoming season. We got everything in stock here. Boom. It's been really cool. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I got to show you this. I'm going a little retro style here, Schmitty. Oh, boy. He's showing me his sweatshirt for everyone. H2O Junkies. That, that is retro. That right there is old school. That's like from 2012, 13, when we used to do the H2O Junkies webisodes yep. on YouTube. Yep. Yeah, that's when we used to make those bow fishing videos and stuff. So I'm going a little retro here with the H2O Junkies. You ever see those views on YouTube with those H2O Junkie episodes? Yeah, they've been really good. I mean, every once in a while I'll come across one and it'll be recommended or I'll go on the on our page to look at it. Oh, 500,000 views. Holy cow. Yeah. They did really well. Right. And I think they aged well, too, because back then there wasn't a ton of well-done bow fishing content right. like that yeah. with filming and everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you guys haven't checked those out, Matt's got a ton of really cool episodes that you guys put out. Yeah, they're from, you know, like 2013 and 14 and stuff, and I think we should get back and doing them. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, we've also got some big news to announce mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the date set for this year's AMS Big 20. Um, it's going to be held again in Marshfield, Wisconsin at the Marshfield Fairgrounds. And the dates for this year's Big 20 is going to be May 21st, and the 22nd, Ooh. prime time, you're getting ready to tail end of the buff spawn and the, you, you know, a lot of areas are going to have the, the carp spawn is going to be going on right there. So, so we got some good dates set for this year's tournament. Um, we'll have more information posted on the AMS Facebook page uh, with, with the schedule, you know, for each day and stuff like that there and when will be pre-registration and all that stuff. So keep checking our Facebook page for that as well. I was going to ask you, Matt, I don't know the answer to this. Maybe I'm putting you on the spot. Maybe you don't know. Are we going to have that same buff limit like we did last year as far as that strategic Not shooting sure yet. goes? Not sure yet. Okay. Uh, the people that I talked to last year really liked that. And what was the limit? Was it 10 buffs max? You could only weigh in 10 buffs. Yep. Out, of a, out, of a big, out of a big 20. Out of a big 20. And that put a lot of strategy into yeah. your night of bow fishing which yeah. i really like that part of it yeah yeah you know instead yeah. of going to one lake and doing all your stuff on one lake yeah you got to strategize a little bit if you want to contend for the win for the big 20 right mm -hmm. right yep i agree i'll uh, let matt take this one away we uh he does it every week it's really cool um you just want to tell us a little bit about that hit or miss see if we can't oh, get some people bet. who aren't participating to go over and check that out absolutely so if you if you're not unaware on the ams facebook page every monday at three o'clock I post a hit or miss video, all right? And you guys have to decide. I'll show a little video clip of a fish getting shot, and right before the arrow hits the water, I freeze the frame, and then you guys have to guess if it was a hit or miss. Um, the following Monday, I reveal if it was a hit or miss, and then we pick one lucky winner that guessed correctly. From the comments of that post. Correct, yep. And then they win a prize. You know, we've been doing, like, gaffs and AMS shirt hat combos, uh, line cutters. But... In three more weeks, all right, that's when the hit or miss is going to end for this year. In three more weeks, on the very last hit or miss 
uh, video, mm. we've got some very nice Ooh. prizes. Oh, really? And we're going to have really? three different winners. Okay. But they have to guess correctly. So will this be like in past years, Matt, where there is going to be on that last that last episode of Hit or Miss, there's going to be three exactly. different shots. Oh, you ho, ho. bet. They're going to make them earn it a little bit, yeah, Absolutely. Aren't you? So there's going to be three video clips, and you have to guess correctly in each video clip, was it hit or miss? You know, it could be miss, miss, hit, 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 miss, 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 hit, hit, hit. You have to guess correctly on those. Mm-hmm. But we've got some great prizes that somebody's going to win for that. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, just to warn everybody, Matt likes to be a little tricky with these shots. Uh, just so everyone mm-hmm. knows, if it's if it's me shooting at a fish, it's an automatic hit. Uh, you can just put that in the bank right there. It's going to be a hit. I don't think I've ever missed a fish out shooting. Um, <laughs> if it's Matt shooting, uh, I'd say it's about 20% that it might be a hit, 80% miss. Just to help everybody out there. Just you are going to hell for <laughs> lying. That's what you always say. Your and mom must have said no, that. Your to nose you. is growing too. It's going to hit your. It's going to hit my microphone. Yeah, your little filter there. So yeah, be careful. it's probably vice versa. If I'm shooting, <laughs> guess miss. If Matt's shooting, dead on. <laughs> All right. Well, let's give Mr. Travis Lamper uh, from Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing a call down in Florida, and let's have a chat with him, Schmitty. Absolutely. Matt's going to give him a dial up here. Um, Going out with guides is such a fun way to experience bow fishing if you haven't before. Most of the time, these guys live and breathe it. Um, Travis and Shannon Grant run a great outfit down there. Let's see what uh, Travis has to say to us today. Hello? Is this Travis from Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing? This is... uh... Matthew from AMS Bowfishing, and I'm here with my good partner, Derek Schmidt. Hey, Travis. Yes, sir. How this are you? This is Tra- Travis and Shannon here with you. Oh, so we got Shannon also on. Yeah, we got Shannon here, too. Yeah, man. Awesome deal. How you doing, Shannon? Fantastic. How you doing? We're doing wonderful up here. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so <laughs> I, we're, we're, we're actually glad that you're on because you actually had a little something happen last night. You had a guided trip, correct? I did. Yep, and can you tell us, uh, tell the fans out there kind of what happened when you got back to the boat landing? <laughs> Uh-oh. Wow, yeah, it was a little bit of an interesting night last night. I uh, I had had five people last night, and we went out, and we were fishing, and uh, two of them, we, we, I had a girl on the boat, and she decided she had to use the restroom and didn't want to use it on the side of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it was weird. But, um, <laughs> so we went back to the boat ramp and when we got there, her and her and her buddy decided they were gonna stay in the in the van and uh so I took the other three back out to finish the night out and Oh, well, we were out there, we had left them and about twenty minutes later I get a phone call or one of the guys on the boat gets a phone call. And uh, he looks at me as like, is somebody supposed to be, you know, messing with your truck or anything? Do you have somebody oh, coming no. to get something? I was like, no, oh. definitely not. <laughs> he was wow. like, well, they're saying somebody's walking around your truck with a flashlight and stuff and shining in and looking for stuff. Oh, so my we, gosh. Yeah, we packed up and and hauled back, butt back to the boat ramp. And by the time I got there, they had, they had, uh, stole my trailer oh my gosh I hooked, it, hooked it to their truck stole the trailer luckily i mean i'm fortunate because the the guys that were in the van you know that we had dropped off right um followed them oh and nice and they got they got scared and dropped the trailer in the middle of the road what happens it popped off their ball because it there was nothing holding it on except the safety chains oh, oh my gosh so it popped off their ball and skid it down the road a little bit and they pulled it off and dropped it right there and then uh <laughs> and thankfully the cops found them about 10 minutes after that wow was, good lord unreal a series of events i guess unfolded you know not i, I don't want to say fortunately but uh i was fortunate to be able to get my trailer back because my yeah. boat would still be in the water right now absolutely <laughs> Jeez, it's amazing what people do these days you know it's just they don't it care is. about other people's yeah. Yeah. stuff, yeah. you know? It's despicable. It's it is. Really dis- it is despicable, yeah. You got that yeah. right. You got that right. Well, yeah. fellas, we're going to be asking you guys a couple questions about 
who you are, how you got into the sport, uh, what you guys do now. So um, I'm going to let Derek start it out here. He's going to ask you the first question, all right? And whoever wants to answer, Travis or Shannon, go ahead and jump right in. Okay. All right, guys. So we're just going to rapid fire some questions off at you. First question, how did you guys get involved in the sport of bow fishing? Was it from a family member or a friend or just on your own? You want to dive into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Um, we, we both growing up here in Florida, um, we both, I, I remember when I was probably what, seven, eight years old in the yeah. boat and my dad's John boat watching him trying to shoot tilapia with a bow mm -hmm. it, and never, it didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it never looks like any fun to us because I never saw him bring a fish in the boat. To be honest with you. <laughs> but well, it was, that always stuck in my head. And then, um, you know, later on in life, my father-in-law, you know, told me he's like as much as you love bow hunting as much as you love fishing he's like that you need you really need to try bow fishing yeah and i always wanted to try it never did and and uh i guess finally one day we just we decided well, we wanted to do it so we decided he we had moved up to Michigan <coughs> and uh he got into bow hunting big up there sure and, and he moved back down here when i finally talked to him in the coming back down here where we can fish year round without having to drill holes <laughs> 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 we uh we got into the gator hunting. Nice. And, and we did the gator hunt the first year, the public season hunt. And then the second year, he was like, I want to shoot one with a bow. He was yeah. like, we need to see if we can, you know, practice on something to see if we can shoot a bow with a line attached to it. I was like, and I, all, I, all I flashed back was my dad <laughs> shooting that fish and wasting time yeah. when we could have been bass fishing or something else. So right. I was, like, I was like, I can't do that. It's not a thing. You know, yeah, it's not, it's not real. That's in the movies. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so we got into it. We went out there and, uh, started shooting started a gar, shooting a gar and, and fell in love. Absolutely fell in yeah. love with boat fishing. It was like, it totally changed our lives. Oh, that's totally awesome. Changed the rods and reels got put away. They're in the attic now. Isn't that yeah. something? <laughs> <laughs> I still got them, but they're close to antique. I think they call them vintage. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's yeah, it, cool. to it totally changed our life. It really did. Yeah, so that was that was kind of how we got into it. You know, it was, you know, every October we come around when Travis moved down here, and he would be, I'd be depressed because he was just a bear yeah. to deal with. It. Yeah, because I wasn't didn't have it wasn't in the tree stand, you know, and and hunting yep. deer and all that yep. stuff. And so that kinda, I should be in the tree. I should be in the tree, but it's ninety five degrees. I'm yeah. Like, oh I'm man. The tree if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's hard to do. Yeah. Fun down here wow. Wow. <laughs> so, but, so have both of you always lived in Florida, or? Yeah. So we we were both born in Michigan, but our parents moved to Florida when we were five years. When I was okay. five years old, Jack All right. was three. So, so we grew up in Florida. So we're, I mean, we're 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 the redneck cousins from Florida. Now we're not. Yeah. <laughs> That's they, awesome. They, they, Michigan per se, but yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, what is each of your guys' favorite species to target? Oh man, uh, here in Florida, it is. Uh, I I really love shooting. I could go out all night long looking for flounder. Flounder. I, oh. I love. I okay. love looking. Oh, that's for cool. Flounder. I really do. I, I literally could spend eight hours a night and find two flounder and be thrilled to death. Oh, oh my kidding. gosh. That's it. That's very yeah, interesting. I, I, there's something about it. There's something about it. I, I really, I really love, I really they're, love it. They're them. masters of the skies and they're yes. delicious. Super yep. Yep. Delicious. So, so good eating. Already yeah. really. So, so when you do see them, are they on the bottom with their camouflage facing oh, up yeah, towards you? Yeah, correct? They'll be, whatever they're sitting, whatever they're sitting on, if they're sitting on green grass, they'll be green colored. If they're huh. sitting oh on my sand, gosh. they'll be the same color as the sand. So they're really, really tough, really tough to spot. Really wow. tough to spot. And, and make for a great table fare when you do oh, get one. they're awesome. They're so, they're so good. I call them the nookie fish because when I bring it home, I get nookie. <laughs> 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 it's, it's good eating, man. It's oh, good that's stuff. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah, so yeah. so now you and your brother now own and operate, you know, Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing Charter Services. You know, can you kind of let us know how that kind of started with, with that and all that? And and how the name Twisted Limb? All right. So the, we'll, we'll start out with the name. So okay. <laughs> when, we, when we got 
got into the bow fishing, um, we we learned we had this old uh, this old uh, recurve, an old Ben Pearson recurve okay. that had like terribly twisted limbs. Like <laughs> when you look down, when you look down it, like one limb was way off to the right and one was way off to the left. I mean, it was amazing. It was oh wow! Yeah, it was in in terrible shape, and that's what we learned. That's how we learned how to boat fish. Was on that was on that um with a tape on hand with a tape on hand hand wrap reel that's very cool and that's how that's how we learned to bow fish and when we we started uh you know you, you know joe Minshew. joe yep. Minshew yep. down here had uh was putting out a tournament and we entered that tournament and we needed a team name and this was two months after we started shooting this was the dumbest idea <laughs> I thought, yeah, every, I'm like, we're, we've been shooting for two months we have one wooden recurve in the hat light yeah, you know, and that's what we're fishing with. We show up at this tournament. I was like, we are we're way, way out of place. <laughs> 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 this is gonna be. Good. We ended up in third place though, yeah. shooting that, wow. shooting those recurves, and yeah. But that's that's how we needed a, we needed a team name, and the only thing we could think of was twisted limbs because that was what we learned to shoot yeah. on was that bow with the twisted limbs. So, Very cool. Well, that's cool. Very cool. So that's kind of how we got our name, and mm-hmm. uh, and it got to be like we like. I, I, I told you, I, I, I told you before, like, we love the sport. We, we, we're, I mean, it's not, I love what I'm doing and I love making money doing this, but we really love the sport and, uh, love being able to share it with people, you know? And, that, and that's what we, we started doing is we, we would introduce our friends to it. Our, and it got to be like every weekend we had four or five guys at our house, like, you know, where are we going tonight to bowfish? Right. Oh, that's and cool. I'm like, I was like, you know what, we could, if I got my captain's license, I could probably make a little side money you know, doing this. Hoping, and, hoping to pay for our habit. Yeah, well, that's all I <laughs> wanted to do is pay for our habit, and it, and it kind of exploded, and now we're both full-time bow fishing captains, so. Very cool. That's very, very cool. cool. That's yeah. very cool. So you yeah. mentioned you guys are always, you always had buddies at your house wanting to go out. What type of yeah. boat, what type of boat do you guys use now for these guided trips? So we have, we both have uh, 22, uh, 70 all welds. Nice. And uh, it's a huge boat flat bottom boat like we can fit six people on the front of the boat with us in the middle so seven people on the front of that boat and it still is very stable Mm -hmm. um it's Mm -hmm. uh it's a flat bottom so it floats super shallow still i mean we're in less than a foot of the water most most of the night you know what that's what we're trying to look for anyway is we're trying to look for as shallow as water as we can get into right Um, right makes shooting a lot easier for 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 beginners you know when you're shooting in shallow water so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's so you've uh, got plenty of room on those boats for your clients that come room plenty of room i mean six people on the front of it with with us in the middle too it's just and still plenty of room you know for people to walk around and move around stuff so yeah very you nice. Always, you always have that one when you have a six person trip. You always have that one or two people that want to hang on the back. back. Yes. And, yep. And jump from side to side. That way they're not they're non committal people. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. They play on both sides. Yeah, play both sides. They don't want to get to one side of the boat or the other. They want to go where it's hot. So. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And those boats, those boats are really good for that. They got re- really wide gunnels. You can walk all the way down the side of the boat. It's a really I'm really pleased with these boats. Very nice, very nice. What kind of lights do you guys have on those boats? What do you use um, out there? We have Aero LED, Aero LEDs, the uh, um, hundred watt. Okay, um, nice. 20, 20, 22, 20 lights, twenty two lights on them, something like nice. that. Nice. So, so you're lighting yeah. them up. You're lighting them up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. 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 That's LEDs really cool. are super easy to, you know, low maintenance and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I know I've had Aero LEDs on our boat for. Yeah, probably the last four years now, and I have not had one issue with them at all. They're great, they're great nice. Person, great customer service too, man. Brandon, Brandon's yeah. an amazing guy. Absolutely, I, I really, absolutely. I really do love him. So, well, I have to ask this question because I, I've seen pictures of you guys. I've seen you in, at the Worlds last year and all that stuff. And yeah, why? What's up with the matching beards? All right. <laughs> back too that's oh it does uh, awesome yeah yeah so <laughs> when we when we started bow fishing we started in a little um 12 foot air fiberglass airboat and uh with a hat light you know and stuff and that's that's kind of how yep. we learned how to bow fish without that airboat well and it was what was it 10 years ago that that airboat got stolen right out of oh. our brother's front yard and oh since my gosh. then we, oh my we gosh. haven't cut our beards since then are you kidding so I promise 
you, I promise you. We started growing well, I, up. I, I cut mine because he, I, was, he, yeah. I was angry. Instead of rage, I cut mine. But, <laughs> yeah, but I have, <laughs> I'm a little bit more emotional than Travis is. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, my gosh. That day, since the day we lost that airboat, I haven't cut my beard. So, so the, the beards began out of being ticked off. <laughs> well, well, my reasoning was, like, when we found the guy that stole the airboat. Yep. We were going to do some pretty bad stuff to him, so we needed to change our looks. So oh. I could shave it off look like a totally different person the next day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of what I was going for. <laughs> oh, that is I great. That yeah, yeah. That is great. <laughs> it's probably not good to say right after my trailer almost got stolen. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. so I, I also got to ask, along with the beards, do you guys wear those white rubber boots that I see everybody down in Louisiana and down in Florida wearing all the time too? Do you have the white boots? We don't have the I don't have the white boots. I got some, we got a style. We got gray. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we got gray boots. We got gray boots. We got gray boots. Yeah. All right. We, that's, that's only in the winter. Yeah. That's only if it breaks <laughs> 70 degrees. Yeah, oh, exactly. my God. Wow. So, so right now, it's 53 degrees outside right now. Outside of our house, oh. 53 degrees down here in Florida. That's pretty close to being ice fishing yeah, for us. That's cold. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that's way cold for us. So yeah, when we when it gets cold like this, then we'll put the boots on and gotcha. some and some waders on and all that stuff. Like, everybody, everybody up north listening to this is like, those guys are such pansies. <laughs> 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 Be that what it may, we still wear them. Yeah. Okay, got you. We got thin, we got thin blood down here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, do you guys charter both fresh and salt water? Yes, sir. We we do probably well last... 80, 85, 90 percent in salt water. Yeah. Okay. We get a lot of we get a lot of people from up north that want to come down and shoot a stingray. You know, it's yeah, it's on the bucket list. So Correct. We, yep. we get a lot of salt water, and honestly, I like the salt water. It's you never know what you're gonna see out there. It, yeah. You know, there's all kinds of stuff we get to see every night. And we get to we get to see some really cool stuff in freshwater, and we'll have some people that you know that want to shoot like plecos or um, yeah, yeah. You know, tilapia and stuff is it's a different species that you don't get to shoot up north and stuff. So mm-hmm. we'll get some people that want want to do um, freshwater too. We we have a lot of people you know that come down and do both. And do both. You know, yeah. they'll do a night of freshwater and a night of salt water. Yeah. Oh, so that's kind of neat trip. Yeah, right that's there. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's a that's a good time right there. That way you get to experience both sides of it. You know. Yeah. Because our, our salt water and our freshwater fishing, honestly, is completely different. Hmm. Completely, completely different. And, uh, uh, like, different different seasons and stuff. Uh, I mean, our, honestly, hey, stop. Sorry, got up. <laughs> Jen, Jen wants to talk she's, to. She's trying to talk to. Hey. <laughs> just, just like a woman, she got to get a word in. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, so our, our freshwater and our salt water, you know, like, our, our salt water is good year round, but it gets better in the winter time. Like when the water temperature starts cooling off, these sheephead come in real thick, hmm. and we'll get we'll get a lot of numbers of sheephead in the winter time and stuff. And bigger, larger, and larger, larger okay. sheephead. This sheephead, honestly, it's an offshore fish. Like it's a wreck fish, so like a lot of people catch them offshore on wrecks, and you'll catch them up to like 12, 13 pounds. Oh wow. But, yeah, but those guys don't usually come into the the shallow flats until like winter time. So okay. like that, you'll start big ones coming in. Huh, that's but, very yeah. cool. That's yeah, that's very cool. So, you know, kind of give us a rundown of what a client can expect on a night with twisted limbs bow fishing. You know, you know, kind of give us a rundown in case anybody's out there listening and and they're kind of wondering about how this works. You know, like from start yeah. to finish, where you meet them and stuff like that. And um, and just kind of yeah, we all, you know give them information about about what they can expect. Yeah, well, we always we always meet at the boat ramp, you know, whatever. And, and we got a couple different ramps we go to. We got one that we like. Sure. Uh, we, we our salt water. We do a lot of our salt water out of Cockroach Bay, which uh, the reason I like that area is, is um, I've, I've fished that area in twenty five knot winds before and still been successful because there's a lot of mangrove islands that you can get behind and sure. get out of wind. But, yep. And there's no houses around, so we're not disturbing any houses, not getting the law called on us and all that mm-hmm. stuff. I really like fishing that area because of that. 
Um, but uh, so we'll meet meet them at the boat ramp. Um, well, we've got first. I got to say this first, Heather. Uh, absolutely, Heather. takes care of business. So we have it easy. We we, do. we look at a schedule and just show up at a boat ramp. Yeah, okay. my wife takes care. Like <laughs> when you call to book with with Twisted Limbs, you're going to talk to Heather. That's my wife. Okay, and she does an amazing job of making sure everybody knows exactly what they need and and, and exactly where, where to be and, need, and yeah. what to be. Yeah, she is so good at. at talking to people on the phone so it makes our job so much easier all nice. we gotta do is show up a fish like nice. we get to have fun basically yeah. so, <laughs> that's awesome no, we work hard oh no i mean yeah yeah that's what i mean we work hard if she's <laughs> listening, we work hard but you <laughs> love what you're doing <laughs> yeah. yeah we do we do yes. love what we're doing we do love it so that's so cool it starts with heather and then then they'll they'll meet us at the boat ramp you know and mm-hmm. we take a little bit of time to go over the bows and species of fish you know and some safety protocols and everything talk about you know what they're looking for yeah really that's the biggest thing is finding out what the customer is looking for you know if they're looking to take meat home or if they're looking for a bunch of shots or if they're looking for stingray specifically or something like that you know that that kind of dictates the trip a little bit yeah as far as where we go or what we do sure Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's you know and then after that, it's just turning the lights on and going out there and finding them. Yeah. Right. And right. having fun, having a good time, making sure everybody's having a good time. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what what time? Um, Everybody involved. What time do you, you know? start the met and what time do your your, your trips kind of so end at? We usually start at 8 p.m. Okay. Um, you know, in the wintertime, we, got, we can start a little earlier mm-hmm. if we need to, but usually 8 p.m. Is, our, yeah. is the time that we usually start, and we go till. You know, we it's a four hour, it's a minimum four hour trips. Okay. But a lot of times we're we're having so much fun out there. It'll be in yeah. You know, an hour after the. It's so usually about five hours. You know how it is when you get on the water, you don't look at your watch a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. You know, so, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we end up being like a, it's usually about a five hour trip, but and we tell people you know minimum four hours, <laughs> but we have we have fun out there, so why not stay out? Absolutely. You know, a little Absolutely. bit longer. Yep. Have a good time. yep. Yeah. That's very cool. So you guys take a lot of people out. How often do you guys have first time bow fishermen and what is it like seeing them kind of, you know, learn the ropes of the sport? Oh, it happens all the time. I, uh, At least like most, once or twice a week. Yeah. Mo- mm-hmm. Most of our customers are first timers and I, I love it. Um, man, you know how, you know how fun it is to shoot fish, but to me, even to see, especially a young person, to see a young person connect with their first fish, man, that, that gets me so excited. Absolutely. I mean, just, just as much as, as shooting fish myself, mm-hmm. I, I get even more excited seeing a young person, you know, arrowing their first fish and seeing that arrow just dancing and that and that that person gets so excited about that. You know, I I, I live for that. I really do. I the, live for that. The excitement. That's of, cool. Of somebody that comes out that knows you know nothing about bow fishing, and you know they have. I always ask them. I'm like, wait, wait how, how confident are you? And they're like, man, you know, <laughs> not real confident. I'm like, all right. And then to see them hit their first fish, yeah, you know, and just explode with excitement and stuff. Uh, it it's it's amazing. It's amazing how many people you know return with us because of that. It's because, and it's rewarding too. It really yeah, is rewarding. I bet. To see yep. Do that. Mm-hmm. And I would I would I would take that any day over going out and shooting fish myself that's, that's awesome. cool that's very cool any that's very day. cool yep yep and you know <coughs> we're going to be having this playing on the ams youtube channel as well and we're going to be putting a bunch of pictures up of your clients with fish and uh awesome. and one of the things that i noticed yesterday while getting these pictures was these guys you know women children men uh, they look like they're having a great time what they're doing they all have smiles on their face um so that tells me right there that what you guys are doing is being really enjoyed by the people that are going out with you guys and and i found that to be really striking through all the pictures everybody's smiling and you can just tell they're having a good time and and uh people are photo bombing each other on the boats and stuff and and (laughs) and that's really cool i mean that's you know that's very yeah. important. You know, in a guide service to to have that because you're looking at you want good, you know, good clients. You want repeat customers yeah, and you want good ratings. And I think you guys well, fit the it, bill. I mean, these, 
these are the people that keep us alive. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's real easy. And I've met, I've met a lot of captains, like, like, you know, just in the regular world too, that, you know, where, where they're the boss, they're, they're the boss of everything. If you're on their boat, they're the boss. And that's not the way I look at it. The way I look at it is these people are the ones paying my bills, man. They're the boss. Right. I'm just there in the boat for them. That's all I'm yeah. doing. Absolutely. And, and Any, so anybody can go out in the bow fishing world. Anybody can put some lights on their boat, put a bow in somebody's hand and go out and show them fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Showing them an experience is a different story. Absolutely. Yeah. You hit it right on the head. Yep. Experience. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the greatest compliments I think I've ever got. And, and they just actually booked back with us again and they're coming back down. I'm so excited, but they, they have is the whites from I think they're from Michigan. I don't know. Nice. Uh, she's gonna be mad at me if she listens to this. <laughs> but, um, they have they have three kids, you know, and one's real small, and he he stayed on our beanbag chair and and just kind of relaxed and chilled the whole night. Yeah. And she actually got to shoot, and and the kids got to shoot, and she said, uh, she said this was better than Disney World for them. Oh wow! Oh, wow. Uh, Disney. That All is very cool. Was, what's the boat fishing trip wow and, and that to me you know to outdo the, the yeah rat, yeah that's amazing <laughs> you know that's that's a great compliment right there that, you know absolutely. that's absolutely. awesome that's very cool yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we love our we love our kids and our women that come out with us we have a good time yep with our we kids. can tell that you're you're giving them uh, a lot of excitement and joy while they're with you guys for sure so when you guys when you guys take all these clients out, um, you guys supply the equipment. You guys want to touch on just what you're using and what kind of a night of setting people up with bows looks like. Absolutely. So we're using um, the AMS hooligans for all of our for all of our bows. Nice, nice. Uh, hopefully we're going to be getting some uh, the V twos here soon. Yeah, we were looking at those pretty good. So yep, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, really happy with the hooligans. I think they're a great bow. No let off. I think is is a key to having a good bow fishing bow is, is having the no let off on those hooligans. I think it's so, great. so easily adjustable for the different sizes. Yeah. So like, like you see, weight. we've had kids on the boat, on the boat too. So we can draw those bows down and they can still be successful with them. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. My son used the hooligan. He's, he's 11 years old. He's shooting a hooligan, been shooting it since he was, you know, uh, uh, for a couple of years now for, since he was eight. So Yeah. So I, I really love those bows. Um, nice, nice. We're using uh, interlock for our arrows. We got our interlock for our our, our our saltwater stuff. We'll use the the um grapples. the grapples for mm -hmm. the stingrays. They really hold the stingrays really well. And then for our freshwater stuff, we use the interlock pro points. So okay, we're using for gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, absolutely, absolutely love the hooligans. Yeah, we so we go over the bows and you know. We, we only, we fish mostly, you know, two foot or less, three foot or less of water right. for the most part. So we're not pulling a whole lot of draw weight. We're only pulling about 30 pounds. Yeah, 30, right. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but if, if we have somebody on the boat, you know, that struggles with that draw weight or anything like that, we can, we can adjust those down. things so, down so much. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I love the hooligan bows. Well, that's so. awesome. That's awesome. We appreciate you guys using them on yeah. your on your charter yeah. business there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well, we appreciate the product. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of to wrap this up, Travis and Shannon, um, let everybody know how they can get in touch with you if they want to, you know, get a, a, a guided trip set up with you guys and, and where they can go to find you guys on social media as well. Yeah, um, so we're on on Facebook and Instagram, uh, if you looked up Twisted Limbs Boat Fishing, you're going to find us there. Um, we got a website, www.twistedlimbsboatfishing.com. Um, if you want to book a trip, my wife, Heather, she's the one you're going to call us, 863-307-6687. And she can set you up with a, with a boat fishing trip. Y'all can call us too, but I promise yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're usually sleeping. <laughs> 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 yep, I wouldn't doubt that one bit. We are our when it comes to bow fishing, our lives are kind of flip flop from everybody else's. Oh yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way though, man. Right. I wouldn't have it any other way. That is very cool. That is <laughs> hey, very man, cool. I got, I got one story. Absolutely. Real quick. 
<laughs> yeah. So, so in 2014, oh my gosh, yeah, we're That's just getting story. we're just getting into boat fishing, <laughs> right? We're getting into it heavy, and we went to that first tournament and stuff, and we fished a couple other small local tournaments, and then Travis signed us up for the for the U.S. Open. It was in Missouri that year. Okay. You know, on Table Rock and Bull Shoals. Yes, sir. Yep. Well, me and, me and Travis and my son drove up there, you know, and we get there. We drove all night long, and we get oh, there get there in the morning, and we're, we're going to – we were staying on Table Rock Lake. We were like, let's just get to the resort. But we went across a boat ramp at Bull, Bull Shoals. Shoals, and at the same time we were going to this boat ramp, I had a need to use the bathroom real bad. <laughs> So we pulled into the restroom, which was on the left-hand side of the road, and uh, I used the bathroom, and we go to pull out, and lo and behold, the AMS boat boat pulls in, and we were, I (laughs) starved, I I freaked out like a little girl, man. I was like, oh my gosh, that's my children, that's my children. (laughs) Oh man, oh man. (laughs) drove across there, and you were with Dennis Redden. Yeah, yeah. yep. Mm-hmm. And we drove across there, and and we got our picture taken with you, and sat and talked to you for a half hour, like and super it, down to earth. Like we were just amazed. We, when we left there, we were on cloud nine. We were like, that's <laughs> the yeah. bow fishing guy, you know. That's that's <laughs> bow fishing. We just met Matt Schillinger, oh. and my son got a picture with you. I think he was. He was 13, 14, 14 years old at the time, and he got a picture with you. And when he took the picture, he said. You're going to want to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> you, just by you guys telling that story right now, oh, you have man. no idea how much ammunition you just gave to Derek. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an amazing story. <laughs> that I, just, that was, it was an interesting time, and... and it's crazy how our worlds meet again and everything. So absolutely, yeah, I, I just thought that was a pretty pretty cool story. You know, we were just <laughs> amazing. We were like, that's that's the AMS boat, and yeah. you know, we did. We had a we had a tractor grizzly that we had kind of cobbled some stuff together ourselves. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what I love about this sport, man. It's like so much do it yourself stuff. Absolutely, you learn from everybody else around you. And everybody yep. does things a little different. Yeah, and it works. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. Right. Stop the pitching that works. Exactly. That's what I love about this sport. That's what mm-hmm. I love about it. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks for the story there and giving Schmitty here some ammo. Yes, thank no you. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Travis and Shannon, um, you know, thank you so much for, for joining us today on the Bow Fishing Buzz podcast. And um, we wish you all the best of luck with the Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing Donor in Polk City, Florida. Um, Thank you. Um, you guys do a great job. Like I said, I can tell from the pictures. Um, I talked to Corey Brosman. He and h- him and his family enjoyed, you know, coming out with you down there this past fall. I yeah. think they were down there with yeah. you guys. Um, but once again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, hopefully someday we can meet up on the water and, and have some good times out there sticking some fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to give you guys a little cheer. There we go. <laughs> thank you guys for joining us and um i'm sure we'll be talking soon fellas all right thank you sir thanks guys guys. bye-bye oh wow that was a good interview right there that was fantastic that was fantastic just you know just every every little aspect of it was just perfect just really cool. Great. Really just, cool. Just what you needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. But it never ceases to amaze me, Matt. <clears throat> With just people that we talk to on the show and people we we uh, run into at tournaments or events or our tournament or they just call, the bullfish community is such a tight-knit group of just really, really good down-to-earth people. I That always just blows me away. Hands down, you know. Yes, you have your bad apples, just like you do in – Deer hunting, um, fishing, you have your bad apples. Right. But generally speaking, the bow fishing world, it's tight. It's a, No doubt it's a tight-knit group of guys yep. and, and women and, and everybody. Um, but, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, it's tight-knit. But we're always there to help each other always. when times are needed. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yep. matter what. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You know, we were just talking at the show too, Matt. We we're talking about how Florida is like a. It's just very intriguing. Mm-hmm. It's just an area as far as shooting fish that has just boatloads of opportunity. No doubt. You know? No doubt. Right down there mm-hmm. and just all kinds of species down there. That's really cool That just to hear all the different species that they were talking about. Oh, yeah, if they want to shoot this, we could do that. If they want to do this, we'll do yeah. that. It's like, wow, yeah. that's a lot of yeah. that's a lot of opportunity available to someone down there. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. really cool. I like that twisted limb story. That's funny. That is neat. That's a. I that's love how people get names, you know, like that. And usually there's always a pretty decent story behind the name. You always think, what kind of name is that? Well, then you hear the story and it's like, well, yeah, that makes sense, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So, last thing here, product highlight. I thought it would be appropriate, yeah. Matt, with um, absolutely talking to a guide service like that. They probably get a lot of people who maybe don't do it as much. And like I said earlier, going for a, on a, you know, a guided trip, that's such a great way to introduce yourself and other people into the sport. Even right. like what they said with those kids saying it was better than Disney World. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. I mean, that's a really cool experience. Those kids are remember that forever. And maybe because of that one experience, we got a couple extra people that are going to bullfish now. Absolutely. In the industry. Absolutely. Um, so the product highlight today is going to be the AMS Combo Kit. Matt, we make these things like crazy we out do. in the shop. It's amazing. It's really cool how how universal they can be used. Mm-hmm. Um, the AMS Retriever Pro Combo Kit. Consider our all-inclusive bullfishing combo kit with our best-selling products included. Just install on your bow and go. This kit is perfect for... Those that have a spare hunting bow lying around and want to hit the water with trouble-free proven gear. Uh, the kit includes a Retriever Pro with 25 yards, 200-pound line, two fiberglass arrows with a Chaos FX point and Cyclone tip, and a Tidal Wave rest. That's all you need? Yeah. That's it. Everyone's got an old bow laying around. That is how so many people have gotten started. You buy a, a kit like that, and then 10 years down the road, you got a boat, and you're all decked out ready to go it's just a really Absolutely. good way to to kind of dip your toe into the sport for mm-hmm. sure and another reason the combo kit is so great is because you don't need to have that you don't need to go out and purchase that that new bow a lot of us have a bow that's just laying around in the basement or in the garage that we don't use anymore mm-hmm. you can go to a pawn shop and buy an old recurve you can look at marketplace and find an old compound laying around or or some buddies that might have one yeah you buy that you stick it on your bow you're out on the water bow fishing just like that yeah little side story with the combo kit a couple of years ago matt i went down and had an ams booth set up at i think a youth a nasp shoot in louisville kentucky at yeah. that same convention center yep. and i had a bunch of product down there that i was selling so we have all these all these youth shooters with their bows mm-hmm. and whatnot uh long story short i should have taken more combo kits with me because it was <laughs> it, it was just the perfect thing for all these kids that they they obviously have a background in archery they're down shooting at a you know a nasp event and mm-hmm. i think that was like nationals so mm-hmm. i mean these kids know what they're doing Absolutely. right i mean to be able to say oh yeah slap this on there and you can go out there and shoot some fish that was huge Absolutely. uh so it's really cool to to kind of see that go full circle kids are down there shooting archery and okay maybe they're gonna start shooting some fish now that's cool that's yep. really cool so, like you said yeah. we 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 are out in the shop putting those together all the time yep yep one of our out the door yeah all the time yep Yep, mm-hmm. really cool, mm-hmm. really cool. So with that, if you ever are looking to go bow fishing down in Florida, mm-hmm. make sure to check out Twisted Limbs Bow Fishing, Captain Travis Lampar and Shannon Lampar. Like I said, from the pictures, it looks like they have a good time. The clients are having a good time. Um, check them out. And um, from all of us, at AMS Bow Fishing, we wish you the best of luck. And remember, aim low and think big. Thanks for listening, guys.